to Quake Online. We hope you've been having lots of fun with us. So before we get started, we're going to do the memory verse for you and all of us are going to be leading you in that today. So we hope you have fun with it. Hey everyone, uh, are you ready to do the memory verse this week? This week we are going to do something a little different. So normally we would do, we would show the lyrics and do the actions along with the memory verse so that you can follow along. But we've been doing that for like the past couple of weeks now. We're hoping you have it down pat enough that we're not going to show you the actions this time. Ooh. So, let's see what you're made of. Congratulations on completing the memory verse without seeing the actions. But now, because I'm feeling nice, we're going to do another run of it with the actions. Finally be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the armor of God so that you can take your stand. I hope that you guys smashed that because sure you know the memory verse so well by now and we hope you've been having so much fun with it. So now we're going to be hearing a little bit about the battle plan because it, we've already learnt about every bit of the armour of God so far but we're going to be thinking about what does the Bible say about how we use the armour, when we use the armour and if God gives us any help in that. So Chiara is going to give us a talk today on the battle plan of using the armour of God. Take it away, Chiara. Hey everyone, welcome to the talk for today. As you know, over the past few weeks, we've been learning about the armour of God. And now that we've learnt about each and every piece, we need to think how can we use these pieces of armour that God has given us to fight a battle that's already been won. We know that death has been defeated and that the devil has lost. So what role do we play in this battle? Now before quarantine, a lot of us would participate in weekend sports, such as for example soccer. Now, say that there's a soccer team. This team has all the right uniform and equipment. They've got a jersey, boots and a soccer ball. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that the team knows how to play. And so, if they don't know how to play, they're probably not going to win. So how do we learn how to play? Who shows us the rules and teaches us the best way to win? The coach. One of the most important part of any team sport is listening to what your coach says. They normally have a lot more information and tactics on how to play a game than we would. In the same way that a coach can lead a team of soccer players to victory, Jesus too can lead us to victory through a battle plan. But what is Jesus' battle plan? Well, if we think back to Jesus' life, we know that he wanted us to have a relationship with God. And how do we do that today? Through prayer. So what is prayer? We know as Christians that we love prayer. But we're going to find out exactly what prayer is. Well, 
first one we have here is prayer is talking to God. We use prayer as a way of communicating with God. The most important thing to remember when we talk to God through prayer is that he loves us and that it's okay to admit that we make mistakes or that we're struggling with certain things in our life. In fact, prayer is exactly how we should deal with these feelings of guilt or fear because God loves us and he wants to help us with these feelings. And he does this through listening to and answering our prayers. Just remember that although he may not answer our prayers in the way that we want or expect, he will answer them in the way that is best for us. The second one is, prayer is available anywhere, anytime. If we can pray anytime and anywhere, then we should be praying all the time, everywhere. This doesn't mean that we have to stop going to school or sleeping or eating. It simply means that we should be thinking about God and talking to him everywhere and all the time. When we're at school with our friends, when we're talking to our parents, when we're lying in bed or waiting for a bus. We should be talking to God about all the things we need help with, the things we're grateful for, and our hopes for the future. When we talk to God about all these things, it makes it hard for us to fall into the traps of sin as we're continuously thinking about God. And so it's hard to forget that we should be living life the way he intended because we're always talking to him. The third one we have is prayer is made possible through the Holy Spirit. We pray through the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. We don't always know what we should pray for or how to make sense of what we're feeling, but the Holy Spirit guides us in prayer. When we don't quite have the words, the Holy Spirit can convey how we feel to God and he understands. So there you have it. When we continuously pray to God about anything and everything, we can win against sin. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, please help us to be always thinking about and talking to you. Help us to use the armour you have given us to resist the temptations of sin and win the battle against evil. We thank you that quarantine is coming to an end and pray that the people in Australia and all around the world stay safe in these troubling times. We pray all this in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks very much, Kiara. That was so good to hear that God actually helps us use the armour of God and that we can talk to him about fighting this battle against Satan um, through prayer. And that's something to be so thankful for. Now, Sam is going to help us think about that with a craft. Hey guys, uh, for today's uh, craft, we're actually not gonna be doing a craft in the same sense that we normally would. We're gonna be doing an activity. And while it may only take, you know, maybe five or 10 minutes, it's actually, you're not going to see a result for a whole month. Because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be writing a letter to ourselves in the future. And it's for a very specific reason. See, too often we pray things to God and then by the time he's answered them, we've already forgotten. See, God's amazing like that, that he answers the prayers that we forget. So what we're going to do is together we're going to make a way that we're going to remember some of the amazing things that God has done and understand the awesome ways in which he has done them. And I'm going to show you how. The setup for the activity is very simple. All you need is a piece of paper and an envelope. And on the envelope you're going to write, do not open until October. And on the piece of paper you're going to draw something that looks a little bit like this. Doesn't have to be exactly like that, but something like that. So what you're going to do here, yep, let's see if I can point here, is you're going to write one, two things that you really, really are worried about. Two prayers that you would normally pray to God. You're going to write them down and then you're going to put them in the envelope. So once you've written your two prayers on the piece of paper, you're going to take your envelope that says do not open until October and you're going to put it inside and then I want you to put it on your fridge or somewhere that you can see it but in a place that you're not going to forget and seal it up. Once you get to October you're going to go to this first box here and for each of those prayers you're going to see if God has answered them yet. 
All right, and you're going to do them for both of those. And once you know if God has answered your prayer or not, you can think about maybe why. Why hasn't God answered this yet? What is he trying to teach me? And once you've done that, you go to this second box over here, and I want you to write how God answered your prayers, because quite often he doesn't answer it in the way that we think. This activity may not be as exciting as building a sword or a helmet, but I feel it is much more important. Too often, we pray for things and then forget about them, and we don't say thank you because we forget about them. This way we can remember and we can see the ways God has worked in our lives. God may not answer your prayers, or he may answer your prayers in ways you never imagined. What, either way, we want to see how God is doing it. We want to see what God is trying to teach us through it. But it's going to take a while. So we'll see you in October. Uh, today I thought I would tell you a bit about how God has been working in my life and how I became a Christian. And I'm going to do it using Lego because I love Lego and I think you guys will too. So I've been very blessed to have grown up in a loving Christian family. Everyone in my family are strong Christians. And while that's good, it meant that I went to Sunday school and I knew a whole bunch of stories and I had an awesome time at church for a lot of my life. It also had a bit of a downside. Uh, because my family was you know, so big, I always felt as the youngest that I was just another weaker. I didn't really know who I was or how I fit into the world. And that followed me into school, as my sister went to the same school as I did. So for a lot of my life, I was either the youngest Whitcomb, or just Beck's brother. Beck is my sister. So what I did from a young age is I would start to try and find my identity outside of these two things that I've been put in. I would try and find my identity in my intelligence, things I knew, or I'd try and find it in the friends I had. Well, you know, sometimes I'd try and find it in my grades, or how well I did at school, you know, how popular I was. Sometimes I would even try and find my identity in just how much I knew about God, just sheer knowledge. And so I was building my life very precariously. See, even as I try and demonstrate it, it didn't stand up. And that's how it went for a lot of my life. I was building very precariously. It was working, but just barely. And the problem with building your life precariously on a whole bunch of things that shift and change is that eventually they're going to fail you. See, my problem came from the fact that I didn't have a foundation. While I knew all these stories from the Bible, I didn't actually believe them in my heart. I knew who Jesus was, but I didn't believe it in my heart. I loved my sin too much. I loved finding my identity in my intelligence instead of being a child of God. So when God showed me that everything I was building my life upon wouldn't last and it was very precarious, it was actually really good. And I can see that now, now that I'm here. Because when he flipped that over, he gave me a foundation of knowing that I'm a child of God. Knowing that nothing I can do will ever separate me from him. And knowing that, having that firm foundation, I can then build upon different parts of my life. I can have my intelligence. I can have my humor. I can have my grades. I can have my friends. I can have all of this. But I'm remembering that I'm a child of God first. And he doesn't just see me as the youngest Wickham or Beck's brother. He sees me as perfect and unique. I'm very thankful for that. See, God showed me that when you build your life on the wrong things, they're going to let you down. But God never will. Thanks, Sam. Before we finish up today, we're going to play a little bit of a game and Andrew's going to help us with that. So I'm going to hand over to Andrew and I'll see you all next week. Bye. For the activity this week, I put together a huge word search for you to look through and
and find all the words related to the armour of God and other stuff that we've learnt over the past couple of weeks in Quake Online. Please enjoy! (laughs) 